Generation 3 OU is a competitive Pokemon format that many players consider to be Pokemon at its best. Much like popular competitive fighting game Super Smash Bros. Melee, it's an older installment in the franchise with an enduring and committed community and player base. It has unique mechanics and systems compared to future installments, and though it has a more limited selection of Pokemon, these Pokemon have very varied and defined roles. There is a great sense of balance and many different ideas and structures to build teams around. Project M was a fan-made mod for Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It was an attempt to recreate Melee's unique mechanics and restore the cast of characters to act more like their old selves, while redesigning the newly introduced characters in Brawl to be more in line with the spirit of Melee. I believe that the Pokemon Showdown mod, Hoenn Gaiden, has a similar mission statement. This is a mod that aims to introduce new Pokemon and new concepts from the later installments of the franchise back into Gen 3 OU, while maintaining that classic Gen 3 spirit. Let's take a look at some noteworthy examples of new additions that this mod has introduced, and some examples of team structures that the community has explored so far. This mod is playable on the Dragon Heaven Pokemon Showdown client, which I'll link in the description. I'll also link the Hoenn Gaiden Discord server where you can join and find people to play with and help out with some of your first teams. I myself am happy to help any newcomers. This video topic was requested by DK Koba, a tier 3 patron and an active member of the Hoenn Gaiden community. Thank you for the support. If you'd like to request a video topic for me to cover in the future, take a look at my Patreon link in the description for more information. Folks, when you're talking about a Gen 3 inspired format, the logical place to start is with Tyranitar, the king of Gen 3 OU, the number one Pokemon, who still reigns supreme in Hoenn Gaiden. It's still fantastic, for obvious reasons. Incredible stats, Sandstream, one of the best abilities in the game, and of course various offensive and utility options. One of the greatest move pools competitive Pokemon has ever seen. But what's different about Tyranitar and Hoenn Gaiden? Well, Hoenn Gaiden introduces new items to Gen 3, Gen 3 is a format with very limited item selection. You pretty much run leftovers, lumberry, and choice bands, and the occasional, you know, selackberry, and those are those are the only items that anyone ever uses really in Gen 3 OU, for the most part. But what Hoenn Gaiden has done is added item variety a little bit. So notably we have the type berries that were introduced in Gen 4. They halve damage taken from super effective hits, and on Tyranitar, a huge huge item is Shookaberry, which will halve damage from a ground type attack. This shields you from Dogtrio trapping you with Earthquake. This shields you from various ground types that would otherwise check you. In Gen 3, Flygon can check Tyranitar and deal with it, so can Swamp it. Now you have Shookaberry. You also have Choppelberry to block fighting type attacks. You have Pashoberry to block water type attacks, but Shookaberry is the most common. And on Shookaberry, you just run a simple Dragon Dance, Rock Slide, Earthquake. And what you run in Hoenn Gaiden, folks, is not something that you might expect. You actually run Brick Break has become the standard. And the reason for this is b because of another Pokemon that I would like to, to explore that is, quite honestly, a meta game changer in this format. This is Magnezone, who, is, who functions very differently in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. Rather than having Magnet Pull, that's what Magneton still has. Magneton is still a good Magnet Puller. But Magnezone has Levitate, which defensively is incredible. You have Electric Steel typing with Levitate, and your stats have been reworked. Not as high of a special attack stat, you're more of a defensive Pokemon. You are an alternate Rock Resist Steel type that can be completely... This was kind of designed to be anti-Tyranitar a little bit, and anti, you know, the classic rock ground coverage options, which are also seen on Pokemon like Flygon. Magnezone resists rock and is immune to ground, so Tyranitar needs to run Brick Break to be able to threaten it super effectively. And another item you can run on Tyranitar now is a new addition, Expert Belt. Expert Belt is a very significant new addition. This is an item that you do see sometimes in later gens, but in the lower power level of Gen 3, the access to this item is much more significant. There's not a huge amount of items in Gen 3 that enhance your damage, and a Pokemon like Tyranitar is often doing damage super effectively with 
its coverage options, especially with Brick Break, which is used for super effective coverage on things like Blissey, which could sometimes live a hit if it's fully defensively invested, or Magnazone, Enemy Tyranitar, various things. Rock Slide and Earthquake also hit super effectively very often. Expert Belt is a great item. You can run Expert Belt on a mixed Tyranitar set, which is another set that is common in Gen 3. So Tyranitar, you know, can run the, the classic Lumberry DD sets. It can run, you know, Choice Band sets. All the classic sets from Gen 3 OU, but now Tyranitar is even more versatile. It has Shookerberry. It has Expert Belt. It has all these new options. And, you know, using Tyranitar and, you know, playing with Tyranitar is a different thing in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. Tyranitar is sort of adapted to it, to the new meta. Another thing to note is that Pursuit Tyranitar is not as good in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden for the simple reason that there are now more ghost types. The thing about Gen 3 OU is that, uh, you know, ghost, of course, is one of the best types in the game, but the only good ghost type really is Gengar. There are some fringe ghost types that people have explored, but Gengar is the one. In Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden, there is, I mean, right here we can see Frostlass, who is an Ice Ghost Spike Setter with Taunt and Ice Beam, Destiny Bond, options like that. Aggro Spike Setter, very fun to use. Very cool Pokemon. A little bit unexplored. And another one is Jellicent, who is a fantastic Pokemon in this metagame with Water Absorb, Water Ghost Typing, Solid defensive stats for this game, and, you know, fantastic options like Will-O-Wisp, Surf, Ice Beam, Recover. Acts a lot like Melodic did in Gen 3, but it has the added benefit of being able to spin block and directly threaten Tyranitar with Surf. So this is one of the reasons why Pursuit Tyranitar is not great, because you can't safely come into a Jellicent Surf. And another reason, there's also Dusclops has been reworked to be much better. Dusclops has Ice Body, which is, I mean, honestly, let's get into let's get into the real nitty gritty of the thing. Our Bomber Snow is back, is in the game, with Hail. This is a big game changer because Hail can delete Sand by switching in, which is not something that Gen 3 OU is used to. You know, it's supposed to be the Sand meta game. The only way to clear Sand in Gen 3 is with effects like Sunny Day and Rain Dance. Sand is the only permanent weather effect. Now there's another permanent weather effect in Hail, and there are Hail synergies. Hail has the benefit of chipping every single type except for Ice, which is a very wide array of things that you chip with the Hail Storm. And one of the best Pokemon on Hail teams is Dusclops, who has Ice Body, which heals him in the Hail. It's a spin blocker, it's an incredible wall, it, you know, you double heal with lefties. You have access to will o -Wisp's Shadow Ball Rest. All the same options you get in Gen 3. But this Pokemon in Gen 3 is not very good because it's competing with Gengar, who has Levitate, which grants spike immunity, which is very important. And Dusclops is very vulnerable to spike chip and sand chip, and it just gets worn down very easily despite how bulky it is. In this gen now, it is an incredible enabler for Hail, because Hail is the anti-sand. And Hail, if you have Ice Body, you are immune to Hail Chip damage, even though you're not an Ice type. You are not only immune to the Chip, you gain double Chip healing with Leftovers as well as Ice Body. So this Pokemon is... I mean, Tyranitar can at least cut its Leftovers off, but... You can get Brick Break to threaten a potential Pursuit Tyranitar, or you can run... Dog Trio alongside the Abomas Snow to eliminate Tyranitar and then win the Weather War, get your Hail up, and then Dusclops cannot be defeated. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is kind of a good pool of Pokemon to show all the different ways that Hoenn Gaiden is a bit different. You have different defensive checks to the common Pokemon, new ghost types new spin blockers, a new weather effect, and the way trappers work is different. Because there's Shookerberry, so... I actually figured out that you can run Hidden Power Fighting on Dugtrio now, which actually one-hits Tyranitar and doesn't uh, doesn't get owned by the Shookerberry set. And now Tyranitar, they can run Choppleberry. There's, there's all this... it's evolving. People are countering one another. 
There's such there's such gaming going on. There's innovators in the community a little bit, folks. Now, let's look at some examples of good teams in Hoenn Gaiden. I have built many teams. I think that this is a good example right here. This is an HO team, which is something that's crazy is that Deoxys speed is in the format. And amazingly, it doesn't feel that powerful. They have nerfed its stats a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of new spikers. There's a lot of new spikers. And Deoxys speed is an incredible hyper offense Pokemon. You are faster than everything in the world. You can make spikes. And I'm running Expert Belt on this one for extra damage on Ice Beam and Super Power, which is important. Super Power can hit Tyranitar. Ice Beam can hit things like Salamence and Flygon. And with this huge speed, you outspeed them even after Dragon Dance. So that increases your versatility a little bit. And, you know, you just go all in with the spikes. Similar idea to many Gen 3 teams. You have Gengar to block Rapid Spin. And this is interesting. We have Deli Bird, who is now a great mixed threat with much higher... Offenses and a great speed tier outrunning many base 100s. Base 100 is a super common speed benchmark in Gen 3 OU. Deli Bird outruns that, hits 335 max speed, and has fantastic Ice Stab. I like an expert belt on it. You, the classic Bolt Beam coverage with Hidden Power Electric. Brick Break, which smacks Tyranitar, Blissey, and even Rapid Spin, which is great utility. You're also Spike Immune. I think that this Deli Bird is a fantastic spike abuser threat similar to something like a mixed salamence in gen 3 ou but this is like you know you sacrifice your defensive profile for more all-in offense you have stab ice beam and this great attack stat along with brick break and even expert belt to enhance that mixed coverage even further swamp it same old thing swamp it will never be bad it's water ground typing is just great in a metagame where you know rock and ground Physical threats are so prevalent. Gengar also, you know, don't, re don't, need, don't need to reinvent the wheel in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. Gengar remains a fantastic ghost type, but it's good that there's other ghost type options. But in terms of an offensive ghost type, Gengar reigns supreme. And Electrode Hisui, probably my personal favorite Pokemon in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. This Pokemon is not really good enough for the power level of Gen 9 at all. Many people want me to make a video about it. I think there's like no way that thing is that I can even entertain the idea that that guy will be viable in Gen 9 or OU at least. It might be cool in the lower tiers, but in Gen 3 OU power level, this Pokemon is like perfect. It's a perfect fit. It has this speed tier is great. 399 without even needing a plus speed nature is very fast. You outspeed guys like Aerodactyl. Uh, Jolteon, who are who previously were the kings of speed, you outrun even them. Which I think Electrode was was able to run. But this is like a buffed Electrode. Because Grass Typing, not only defensively very useful, but fantastic stab. Electric Grass is very good. You can threaten, you know, Water Types, Flying Types. Giga Drain threatens Ground Types, including the notable Swampert. Hidden Power Ice, I love as coverage. You can hit Flygon, who is very common in Hoenn Garden. And you have fantastic utility options like Aromatherapy and even... One of the screens, light screen, which is a very good option on such a fast support type Pokemon. Explosion in old gens is OP. It says 250 power, but it's effectively 500 because whenever you use Explosion in Gen 3, it actually halves the enemy's defense, which basically means it's a 500 power move, which is pretty crazy. So anything with Explosion is usually pretty all right in Gen 3. And... I love having Explosion on such a fast Pokemon like this. And even though it has such low special attack, you can run a Modest Nature and with spikes down and with this coverage, you are threatening enough to get the job done. Plus the momentum and the power of Explosion and how that enables an offensive plan. This Pokemon is great. I guess I'll talk about some other Pokemon that I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, a notable one is Cloyster, who is very different in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. Mono water typing is much better than its previous water ice typing. It now isn't rock weak. It now isn't fighting weak. And it has overcoat, which makes it immune to both sand and hail. It has the same stats. It previously had different stats, but they've changed it because it was previously a little bit too strong. But 
Cloister, very good. It has spikes and spin. It's sand immune. It can like protect. You can run something like protect toxic. Or you can run, you know, more aggressive sets with explosion. You can run... Most people run leftovers on it. But I have actually uh, experimented with Kustat Berry. Because Kustat Berry is a very cool item to have access to in Gen 3. And you can run, you know, Indoor Explosion. And because you're sand immune, you don't die to the sandstorm. You get to proc the berry and then get a priority move on the next star uh, turn. You can either do a fast explosion or, you know, a clutch rapid spin. Maybe make your last spike if you need to. You can also naturally get hit down to the Kustab range a lot of the time. So Cloyster is one of the best Pokemon in the game. It's actually kind of overshadowed Skarmory as this, the premier spiker. Cloyster is now the best spiker. Cloyster is um, just so great, so versatile. It acts as like a great physical check to many things. It checks things like Flygon and Salamence. And, uh, you know, the sand and hail immunity both. Skarmory is only sand immune. It's not hail immune. So having immunity to both weather effects mean you can run this on sand and hail teams. And if you're against the enemy weather and they win the weather war, you're still a good Pokemon because you're not getting pressured by whatever weather effect won. So... That's worth, that's worth a lot. Overcoat is a great ability. It also grants an immunity to Spore, which is very useful. It means you can come in on Breloom. It means you can come in on Parasect, who, by the way, bit of a segue. Speaking of ghosts, speaking of new threats, speaking of Spore, Parasect is very buffed. It's now Bug Ghost type. It has Water Absorb as well for added immunity and utility. It has Spore, and it has a new attack, Lunge, which is from modern gens this is a great new attack a form of bug stab that is not hidden power with a hundred percent chance to lower attack which is good lets you 1v1 physical attackers very effectively as well as just being a strong bug attack you also can run you know shadow ball which in gen 3 is physical you have options like aromatherapy you have options like knockoff really great move set this pokemon and i personally really like hidden power rock it lets you hit you know, fire types that can come in and threaten you. Yeah, another great Pokemon, but... What's great is that Cloyster with Overcoat is a switch into this because it's a Spore immunity. So I like that there's more... There's Spore counterplay that they've added. They've also added things like... In Gen 3, the move pools can, pools can be very limited. You don't have good bug stab options. There's no, like... Like Scizor, who looks good on paper, just has like no physical stab. You know, you look at it, Steel, Steel Wing is like the best stab move it gets. It's not very good. It doesn't get any good bug attacks. It gets like Silver Wind, which is only 60 power. And Hidden Power Bug is usually what people run. That's the best option. But now it gets access to Lunge if you theoretically want to use Scizor. It's not very good. But now at least like bug types have this actual stab option that's good. That isn't like Mega Horn, which only which only um, Heracross gets. Yeah. So I think that uh, that's a pretty straightforward example of an offensive team is this Deoxys Speed team with Electrode, and another good team. A Pokemon I haven't talked about yet is Sunflora, who is also very buffed. Not only has a little bit better stats, but Desolate Land. I mean, this is one of my other favorites. It's just fun playing with a Sunflora that has the ability of Groudon Primal. If you don't know how it works, this is... On switching, it creates harsh sunlight, which acts exactly the same as sun. But the difference is that it's not permanent. When Sunflora switches out, the, sun, the harsh sunlight goes away. There's just no weather effect. But what's notable about this is that it will reset the weather. So it's an anti-weather mechanic. You can reset either sand or hail to be desolate land. And if they switch in their weather setter while desolate land is active, desolate land will have priority. Desolate land will overtake any uh, potential weather effects. So they switch a bomber snow into Sunflora, it won't work. That is very good. It's nice to have this, these, this new form of weather hail, but I think that having just drought would be too much. Drought or drizzle, as we've seen in like Gen 5 OU, they are like the most dominant weather effects or drought was previously when chlorophyll and stuff was allowed which it now isn't in gen 5 but you know in if in gen 3 stuff like drizzle plus swift swim or uh sun plus chlorophyll was allowed 
it would be too much and it would change the identity of format a lot. But this is weather clear, not weather, but anti-weather, which is a concept in Gen 3. There are teams in Gen 3 that aim to eliminate Tyranitar and then clear the weather with Rain Dance, which enables Pokemon like Snorlax and Suicune, who are very good without stand-up because they get a lot out of chip healing. They are very bulky win conditions that Sand Chip really destroys them by getting rid of their leftovers healing, but Sunflora now is a new way to build around the concept of weather clear and on this squad i am running talon flame who is another new pokemon doesn't act the same way as it does in modern gens it has flame body rather than gale wings which is interesting and it's a rapid spinner with will-o-wisp it's a support sort of bulky fast support pokemon with you know things like rapid spin willow taunt i i really love using this pokemon and wheezing galah another new pokemon you know fairy type doesn't exist in gen 3 so it's poison water type. This is kind of like a buffed Weezing. And Weezing is already pretty good in Gen 3, but it's not quite like a premier physical check. Just because mono poison typing is a bit vulnerable to rock neutral damage, where rock is kind of like the center of the metagame. But what's nice about this water typing is that it lets you actually directly threaten rock types. And also act as a check to fighting types. It's kind of a good roll compression where Weezing in Gen 3 is a great fighting type check. It resists fighting and it has Will-O-Wisp and all these great options and like fire coverage. You know, this Pokemon has such a wide move pool. But yeah, Weezing Galar is like a reinvention of, of Weezing that I think is very, very good. Uh, and it also has access to Aromatherapy, which is obviously great on this team where I have two Pokemon that want to rest. Not only is it a bulkier style of team, but it... You know, it literally has rest users that love to have their status healed for a bit of momentum and, you know, healing them without the drawback of having to waste all those turns. Classic combo, Aroma plus rest. And I love that there's new Aroma users. Previously, it's just Blissey and Celebi, that's it. There's the occasional, like, random Heal Bell Dragonite or uh, Lapras, but those are very fringe options. Now there's, like, viable metagame defensive Pokemon with Aromatherapy that are very good. And it's fun to play with new tools like that in a metagame that is often so, like, restricted to this is the aromatherapy guy, this is the physical check. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it is fun to play with new tools. In a similar way to Project M, where, oh, you know, it's not just Fox, Falco, Sheik, now I can play, like, Diddy Kong or something, or Donkey Kong is buffed and it's viable now. It's fun to play with, like, a Sunflora who previously was just a non-Pokemon that did nothing and is now a meta Pokemon with this fantastic ability. I really enjoy building in this meta game and playing with all these different team styles. And I'll show you one more team style, which is a... No, I'll show you two more. This is an example of a hail team that I built. And this is a team that uh, actually is partially responsible for hail getting nerfed. This team used to look a bit different. It used to have Lapras, who previously was extremely powerful. Lapras is a bit different in Gen 3. It's now nerfed. It used to be like S tier insane Pokemon. It's Dragon Ice, which actually is very good uh, typing for a special wall in Gen 3 because, you know, special types are locked, you know. There's no physical special spit. It's like fire, water, electric, grass, dark, those kind of types. They're all special. So the only special type that affects Lapras super effectively is actually dragon that's the only one and dragon is quite an uncommon type so dragon ice in gen 3 in particular is a very good type combo for a special poke specially defensive pokemon so you can run with your massive health run you know full special defense and act as a very good special wall this used to have thick fat which was really broken that would give you fire and ice resist now they've taken away thick fat you only have water absorbed shell armor but this pokemon's still good Ice types don't get chipped up by hail, so it's a natural fit on that, those teams. And it has options like... This also has Heal Bell. It's another new viable Heal Beller. It has Raw. It has these kinds of things. But on this team, I replaced Lapras post-nerf with Blissey. Who I think is a bit nicer with Natural Cure. Even though it gets hail chip. I also like Snatch, which is a Gen 3 move that... Uh, it's like a priority thing that steals their move. And it only works on certain moves. It's good anti-enemy uh, stall mechanic. 
where it will steal moves like Rest and Calm Mind and I think Substitute as well. It'll steal these moves that that are often anti-Blissey mechanics used to like set up or stall. Snatch will allow you to deny them that. You actually take their move and use it yourself and they do nothing. So yes, yeah, Snatch is really nice. This is used in Gen 3 OU sometimes, but in, in Hoenn Gaiden there are more anti-Blissey mechanics. So it's nice to have Snatch. And we've got the classic Weezing Galar that I've mentioned. Great fighting type check. And, you know, the Ice Body Dusclops, which is actually itemless with Thief, which I think is very good. You can steal an item. And close to who is also Hail Immune. This is like a stall team that aims to eliminate Tyranitar, get Hail up, and then just be annoying with your... You make all the spikes. You have this Dusclops that cannot die. You have this Weezing that is aromatherapying your Dusclops that is resting and all this stuff. Yeah, this, this team is... A bit of a bastard team, but there are crazy offensive tools in this game that that are very powerful. And I'll show you some examples. Cleavor is a new Pokemon. The Hisui Pokemon works a bit differently in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. Doesn't have Sharpness, the new ability. Just has Swarm. But these stats are great for Gen 3. Bug Rock typing really got offensively, especially in a meta without Stealth Rock and in a meta where Sandstorm is so good. Having Sand Immunity... On a Pokemon that has Reversal, which is, you know, more power the less HP you have, you can run Select Berry and either Substitute down to your Berry or Endure and run Reversal, and you will not die to Sandstorm if you have Sandstorm up. So this is a fantastic uh, offensive Pokemon in general. It has, like, Rock Slide, I believe. It doesn't have Mega Horn. It has Lunge. It has, you know, I think it has... Doesn't have ground coverage, but you can run Hidden Power Ground if you need. It has Swords Dance as well. And Swarm plus plus Lunge will give you a lot of damage once you get down to your Select Berry. Yeah, very good Pokemon on like offensive sand teams. Very good. There's also Hitmon Lee is a new Pokemon that actually has Magic Guard now, which is massive. Sand immunity, spike immunity on this guy. And it has rapid spin. And you know, I love a choice band Hitmon Lee. This thing actually has very good attack stat, randomly very high, a special defense stat, and service of all speed, and you can run, you know, Brick Break, Shadow Ball, oh sorry, you don't get Shadow Ball, Hidden Power Ghost, Rock Slide, like this is very good coverage, and you can run something like Focus Punch or Mark Punch, priority option, very powerful. Yep, so there's a lot of new good fighting types, there's a lot of good new fighting type answers. There's a lot of new stuff in general that is sort of trying to check and balance each other in the way that Gen 3 does, where there's a there's this balance between like threats and checks that is very good. You know, it seems like every time in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden, when they're trying to design a new threat, they also try to add a new defensive thing that can handle it. I think that they're doing a good job, and it's a hard thing to, to balance a format, but I think that their, their head's in the right place. They kind of get the spirit of Gen 3 very, very well. And I really enjoying building and exploring this metagame. There's been tournaments. I hosted one in the past. And there was one recently that was hosted by Bynum, who's another guy in the community. The last team I'll talk about here is a Superman team, which um, Superman is a concept from Gen 3 OU where you use as many spike immune Pokemon as you can. Pokemon that are flying type or levitate to basically ignore spikes rather than try to rapid spin or even... Uh, outcompete the spikes with your with your own offense or anything like that. You just try to ignore spikes completely. And this team is actually fully spike immune. Every single Pokemon is spike immune. There's a lot more spike immune Pokemon now. We have Uxi who has Levitate and great utility options like Wish and Heal Bell. You have Magnazone, which we've already talked about, who is a, you know, fantastic defensive check to a lot of common Pokemon like uh, Tyranitar, as long as it doesn't have Brick Break, which is now rising in popularity because of Magnazone. It's great against Flygon, who is also popular. Now that Flygon actually has Dragon Dance, that's a new thing. Skarmory, uh, even though Cloyster has now surpassed Skarmory a little bit as the premier spiker, Skarmory is obviously still very good and popular 
especially on sand teams and even Superman teams like this that need spike immunity. Cloister is not spike immune. Skarmory is still spike immune. It still has that elite typing for a physical defensive mon. And this is actually a rest Skarmory, which is just a, a pure bastard set. This is a team by Fredazi, who is really... He's really pushed pushed the metagame to the limits with this one in terms of, you know, ignoring spikes. So we've got a lot of rest users with the Heal Bell Uxie. We have this Cramorant, who has rest as well. Cramorant, new Pokemon. Gulp Missile is a little bit different. It does not um, actually inflict paralysis. I think this is incorrect. After you use Surf, it will... Uh, Whenever this, whenever you get attacked, you will take one quarter of your health and have minus one defense, which is actually still good passive damage. You have very good special defense, and Whirlwind is good for phasing, Toxic, of course, and Rest. Interesting Pokemon. A good addition, I think. Interesting. It's a bit similar to Mantine, who is another water flying type special wall. But this one, I think, uh, is... Has, having access to Whirlwind is a big deal. Having Gulp Missile for that form of passive, uh, you know, you can't hit him unless you want to get threatened by the the big nuke there is interesting. And it works well with Gliscor, who's another new Pokemon who is obviously immune to Electric, which is with Cramorant is weak to. This has Knock Off, Rest, Earthquake, another fantastic new Pokemon. And Sand Veil is, is, works differently. It uh, actually increases defense in the sandstorm by 1.1 times instead of providing immune um, evasion, which it used to. It increases defense a little bit, which is pretty massive on this Pokemon. And lastly, we have Miss Magius, another new ghost type. Mono ghost with levitate and actually gets the mean look parasong combo for trapping. You can mean look parasong rest. This set is running thunder to hit uh, some flying types. Very good Pokemon. Honestly, a little bit problematic. I don't know if this is... This is kind of... Because people use Miss Dreavus for this combo in Gen 3 Odoo sometimes. That's how kind of good that combo is. Even on Miss Dreavus, a Pokemon that's not that good. Not that Miss Dreavus is that common, but it occasionally sees use just because it has this. And Miss Magius is a lot better. It has much better stats. And, you know, actually poses a threat offensively, so... This Pokemon, I think, is very strong and fits right into this spike immune playstyle where eliminating enemies and this is a Pokemon that this is a style that is frustratingly difficult to pin down and eliminate. There are Pokemon that do punish it, but it's not infallible, but this is a very good strategy and Miss Magius enhances it very well by eliminating the Pokemon and, you know, a form of actually making progress by trapping and eliminating things. So... Yeah, that's a good impression of Hoenn Garden, I think, that I've... A little bit rambly here, a little bit all over the place. Uh, getting sidetracked, talking about things as they come up. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to follow. And hopefully you have a little bit more of a desire to check out the metagame now. I will show some teams in the description. I will link the Discord. I'll link the server where you can play it. And I'm down to play games whenever, if you want to shoot, shoot me a message. There's a lot of active guys in there. It's a pretty small community, but they're active and they're involved. So give it a go, guys. There'll be more tourneys to come. I'm really a fan of this meta. I'll probably host another tourney in the future when I have a bit more time. At the moment, I'm a bit full on with all the Gen 9 videos. But uh, I do love hosting tournaments, especially for little uh, niche formats like this that I think deserve more attention. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. DK Koba, hope you liked the video. Thank you for requesting the topic. If you guys want me to to explore, you know, more niche formats like this that you enjoy, I know a lot of fans of like Gen 4 Ubers, formats like Gen 5 UU, these more niche, older formats that are very good and balanced and cool. I'm down to do that. Explore those. Even though I'm not into those formats very deeply, I'll, I'll look into them. And try to make a similar vid like this if you want something like that. Or if you just want to request any Pokemon related topic like an analysis of your favorite guy, whatever. I'm down. So check out Patreon. That's a Patreon reward for tier 3 patrons. Thank you for the continued support, DK Koba. And all the rest of the patrons. You guys are great. Thank you guys. Folks, 
like and subscribe to the channel for more content and take a look at whatever these videos getting recommended on the screen are. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're fantastic. I'm sure they're awesome. Thank you everybody, and I'll see you later.